Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the price to book ratio as well as the price earnings ratio. Matter of fact, I'm going to explain each one separately, then we're going to combine them together and see what they tell us about the market price of a particular stock. Before I start, I would like to remind you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, specifically if you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student. On my website, I do provide additional resources if you're a CPA candidate for your CPA preparation. Whether you are using Wiley, Glime, Roger, Becker, or any other course, I don't replace those courses. I wish I can, but I can't. What I do is I can be a useful addition to your CPA course. Also, I have plenty of accounting audit tax as well as finance courses. Also, please connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, subscribe to my YouTube and connect with me on Instagram and Facebook as well. Let's start by looking at market to book ratio or to be more specific, it's known as price to book ratio. How do we compute this ratio? Well, simply put, we're going to take the price of the share which is the market price of a share divided by the book value per share. Now, there is a way to compute the book value per share, and it's important to understand how the book value is computed because, because I'm going to take this ratio and kind of dissect it a little bit. The book value per share is the book value of the company. What is the book value of the company? We look at the company's balance sheet. They have assets and they have liabilities plus equity. What's going to happen is this. Assets minus liabilities equal to equity. So this is basically the equity is what's left over. We'll take the equity of the company divided by the number of shares to get to the book value. Now for a finance course, you'll always be given this number, the book value per share. But in accounting, we actually compute this number. So the reason I'm doing this because the book value is basically has to do with the equity of the business. The equity means the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at what some analysts, uh, how some analysts read this. Some analysts consider the stock of a firm with a low market to book ratio as a safer investment. Notice safer as in quote, that's not really true, especially for publicly trading company, seeing that the book value as a, as a floor supporting the market price. The assumption that they're making here is this. They view the book value as the level below which market prices will not fall because the firm can always liquidate and sell their assets for the book value. But that's not really true. The way the, the way we should look at the book value, I'm sorry, at this ratio, what they're saying is some analysts are saying the closer this is to one, the safer is the company because we can sell everything, liquidate everything and get our money back. But this is not why you invest. You invest for future growth. OK, so this idea is very questionable. OK, so the lower this number, the less off you are. What you want is you want a bigger number. And this was proven true in mid 2017. Shares of Honda, Mitsubishi and Barclay sold for less than their book value. So the book value is not really a floor for the stock. And anyway, when you buy a stock, that's not really what you want. You don't want a floor. You want the stock price to be a multiple of the book value. For example, the restaurant business. If the book value of the restaurant is 20, the restaurant business has a, multi, a, a P price to book of five. It means the if your book value is 20, your stock price should be 100 because in the restaurant business, the multiple is five. For example, the retailer, the multiple could be eight. Or for example, technology companies, the multiple could be 15. So take your book value your stock price should be 15 times your book value. How do we come up with these multiple? Well, that's a professional judgment. That's based on macroeconomics, fa macroeconomics factor, industry factors, company factor, and many other factors. But the point is, don't think that the book value, the closer it is, the safer you are. On the contrary, you want this ratio to be a multiple, the price, uh, a multiple of the book value, a reasonable multiple as well. It cannot be too high. Then the price, could, the price of the stock could be, uh, the price of the stock could be overvalued. The company could be overvalued through the through the price of the stock. Here's Walmart. The price to book ratio is five five dollars and twenty seven cent. So the market price is five. Uh, the pr the price to book market is 527 well we have the market price 138.75 from this market price i can find the book value per share so if i take 138.75 divided by 5.27 i know the book value per share 
for Walmart is $26.32. So simply put, Walmart is trading at 5.27 times their book value because if we take the book value per share times 5.27 will give us the current price of Walmart. Now, if we look at Apple, Apple price to book is 25.76. What does that mean? Let's see what does that mean. It means if the stock price of Apple is $108.86, it closed on October 30th, we'll divide this by 25.76. We find, we, we notice that we notice it's the book value. We notice that the book value is... Uh, per share is four dollars and twenty two cent so notice apple is trading 25 times their book value is this justified well it all depends on what you think of apple if you think apple is justified uh, by their future earnings then yeah you think that's a good price or you may say well based on their price to book this is a very high price compared to their book but remember the difference between apple and walmart Walmart has a lot of physical asset. Apple does not. Apple is a technology company, so you cannot compare the two. For example, you may look at Microsoft with a book value of 12.41, which is, which is not as high as Apple, but it's higher than Walmart. And notice that Microsoft, their price to book is 12.41 and 12 times. In other words, Microsoft is trading, take their book value, multiply it by 12.41, will give you the current price of 202.47 now obviously this will change because as your stock price as your stock price changes this ratio will Can change as well anything, let's look at the pe ratio price to earnings ratio very similar because what you're doing here it's it's also a multiple the price of the stock okay so the price of the stock dividing by the earnings per share eps so notice the similarities between the two ratio this is the price per share divided by the book value and this ratio is the price per share divided by its future earnings or earnings per share so notice the numerator is the same the numerator is price to earnings this ratio of a stock price to its earning per share also refer as the PE multiple. It's another multiple. But here what we're looking at, we're looking at the multiple as of the future earnings rather than the multiple as of the book value. Well, it depends on how you look at the company. If you are, if you want to value the company from a book value perspective, you would look at their book value and you would say, I'm going to pay five times the book value or seven times the book value. Or if you want to buy the company based on the future earning multiple, you would look at their multiple and you would say, I want to pay 10 times their multiple. So if they're earning $1 per share and you want to pay 10 times their multiple, well, you'll pay $10 for the share. If you want to pay uh, 15 times their multiple if, if you think i should pay 15 times their multiple then their price should be 15 so on and so forth and we would look at few multiple low pe stocks allow you to, to pay less per dollar of the current earnings so if you have a pe of eight it means for every dollar in earnings you are paying eight dollars per share okay so the lower the pe the lower you are paying for the stock High, high, high PE stock may still be a better bargain if the earnings are expected to grow quickly enough. So high PE means you're paying many times the multiple. For example, it's making a dollar per share and the price is 40 or the price is 60. Okay. Now what you're doing is for that $1 per share, you are paying $60. Now, why, why, is, why would you pay this much? Why will you pay this much today? For example, growing companies like Tesla, Netflix, they have a high multiple. And the reason is, is because the future earnings. Because in the future, if you buy it today, at, although you're paying 60 times, today but what you expect you expect this number to go from a dollar you'll expect this number to go from a dollar to five dollars so if earnings went from a dollar to five dollar let's see what happened to the multiple now the multiple is 12. now it looks cheap but now you now you're paying 60 because you are currently expecting one dollar but down the road if that one dollar changed to five well, then you paid 12 times per multiple. But the thing is, what you're doing is you're buying the future, okay? Many analysts believe that low PE stocks are more attractive than high PE, not necessary. Remember, when you buy a company, you are buying the future earnings. So the PE, what it's telling you what's going to happen, but really what you're doing is the future, okay? So a high PE ratio may be interpreted 
it's always interpreted as a signal that the market that the market views the firm as enjoying attractive growth opportunities. So high PE means growth, grow, grow, growth opportunities. And let's take a look at the PE for Walmart, Apple, and Microsoft. Just gonna give give us a realistic example. Here the PE ratio for Walmart is 22. Simply put, Walmart, Walmart is expected to earn $6.27 per one share. Well, the investors are willing to pay for every dollar $22.14. So if we take $22.14 uh, multiplied by 6.24 to 6.27, it should give us the price. So Walmart is trading at $22.14 per every dollar in earning. If we look at Apple, Apple is, is expected to earn $3.28 per share. $3.28 per share. The PE ratio, investors are willing to pay 33.14 times per share. Well, the investors at Apple, they're willing to pay a higher multiple, a higher, higher multiple uh, for the future earning of Apple. Therefore, the price, if you take 33.19 multiplied by 3.18, now it becomes a rounding issue, but it should come up around $108.86. Microsoft, their future earning is six dollars and twenty cent, and investors are willing to pay for every dollar in earning thirty-two dollars and sixty-six cent. Their PE ratio again similar to Apple. So notice Microsoft, although it's trading at two hundred two and Apple is trading at one hundred eight. What we would say from an from a value perspective, they're both selling for the same price. What is that price for every dollar in earnings? You are paying around thirty. Thirty-three dollars in on average, thirty-three dollars for every dollars in earning. Now, why would you pay more for Apple and Microsoft, and you would only pay twenty-two twenty-two times for Walmart? Because they have a better prospect for the future. They're gonna have new um, new product because they're in the on the technology and in the, on the technology front. So the expectation. So when you're when you're buying high. The, the expectation is this EPS, it's going to jump into the future. So I'm buying now because I know the earnings per share will go higher. So what drives the stock price is really earnings. That is the whole point I'm trying to make here. Here, what you're looking is you're looking at the company and, and valuing the stock from an earnings rather than a book value perspective. Okay. If you look at this, you're looking at the book value, multiplying the book value by certain multiple. The PE, you're looking at the earnings, future earnings, and you're multiplying the future earnings by a multiple. Now, guess what? We're going to take those two ratios and combine them together. So I'm going to take the price per share divided by the book value divided by the price per share uh, divided by the earnings per share. Basically, they take those two ratios and divide them by each other. What we're going to end up with is ROE. What we're going to end up with is earning divided by the book value, which is earnings divided by equity. Earnings divided by equity or shareholders equity equal to return on equity. And we should be very familiar with return of, on equity. If not, go to my previous recordings. I have one or two recording and one specifically dissecting return on equity. So simply put, return on equity, what it boils down to is the price per book ratio divided by the P.E. ratio. So those two formulas those two not formulas those two those two ratios divide them by each other now if we rearrange and manipulate this formula to compute the pe ratio what we find out is the pe equal to the price per market or the price per book divided by roe so this is another way to kind of combine those two ratios together the earnings and the book okay because remember we looked at the company company from a uh, book value perspective, a multiple of the book value, we look at the company from the earnings perspective. Now we combine both ratios and we come up that the PE ratio, the multiple of the company, should equal to the price over book divided by ROE. Now to kind of kind of make little to make a little bit more sense of this and see what drives basically we want to see what drives the stock price at the end of the day. I made this chart kind of just just to take a look at this, look at these two figures. Let's assume we're dealing with a company with a market price of 100 uh, and the book value per share is 20. Therefore, we'd say book uh, price to book is, a, is, is 5. 100 divided by 20 equal to 5. And we're going to assume for the sake of illustration that a, an appropriate multiple for this company is 25. An appropriate multiple. It means uh, a fair price for this company is 25. Now, how do we determine that this is a fair price? Well, it's based on what the, the overall industry, okay? The, your knowledge, your judgment. 
So 25, 25 times is, is a fair price. Now, what we, what we would say is this. If the price to book ratio is five, if you think you should pay 25, we would say that the return, on, if, we solve for, if we solve the formula, we would say that return on equity is 20%. Simply put, let me rephrase what I just said. So ROE is 20%. The, uh, this, if, uh, if, if, then ROE should be 20%. So the stock price is 100, the book value is five, the PB is five, the return on equity is 20%. Now let's assume, let's keep, let's keep ROE is the same and let's assume the stock price went from 100 to 120. Usually the book value does not change because those are accounting figures. 120 divided by 20, we have a PB of six. If we have a PB of six and we solve for the formula, in other words, if this is, if this is six, if this is six, if we keep ROE at 20%, if we don't improve our ROE, our PE ratio becomes 30. This becomes 30. What does that mean? Remember, we said 20, 25 is a fair price. In other words, um, this company will deserve 25 times for every dollar they make, it deserve 25 times to be paid 25 times for every dollar. Now what happened is the stock price went up the, the PE, the, the PE ratio becomes 30. Now, how can we justify this PE ratio? If we want to justify this PE ratio and buy the stocks, we would expect the PE to go up. So simply put, now we want the PE, we want the PE ratio equal to 0.25. Why? Because if we take 6 divided by 0.25, if we take 6 divided by 0.25, now the P-E ratio is 24, which is closer to 25. So if you want to still buy the stock, you want the company to earn rather than 20. You want the company to earn 25% return on equity. Again, we're going back to see what drives the stock. What drives the stock is the return, whether it's represented by EPS, earnings per share, or return on equity. You want the, you want the company to earn more in relationship to the stockholders same thing if we if the price keeps on going up went up to 140 now the price to market equal to seven well if if return on equity stays at 20 20 percent now the pe multiple is 35 the company is considered expensive so one one of one of the things should happen the price either go down the price will either go down toward 100 for the multiple to go back to 25 or the company will have to earn more on return on equity. So I'm just showing you the relationship. Let's assume here we're going to keep, well, let's assume we keep uh, the uh, price uh, to book at five and let's see what happened. Notice if this is a fair, if this is the fair, if, if this is a fair price for the stock, which is a multiple of 25, ROE equal to 20. Let's assume the company, they are now becoming more efficient, they're earning more, and the return on equity is 25%. Well, if the stock does not move, if the stock stays at $100, what happens is its PE multiple becomes 20. This becomes cheap. So automatically, once, be, once this price becomes cheap, people will go in and they will start to buy the stock. They will start to drive the, this P up. Once they drive this P up, this will go down, this will go up to 25. So notice, what drives this whole thing is return on equity. So if return on equity, if the company earned more, the PE becomes cheaper. As the PE becomes cheaper, people will jump in and say, this is a cheap stock, let's buy it. The company is earning good, then it will go back to 25. Let's assume if the PE goes up to 30, if the PE goes up, I'm sorry, if the return on equity goes up to 30%, now they're making a lot of money and they're able to keep more of it for the shareholder, the PE ratio goes down to 16.67, wow. Now we're only paying 16.67, but 25 times is a fair price. What happens is everybody will jump in and they will start to buy this stock. As a result, this P here, the price will go up and the PE ratio will go back to normal to 25. And again, you could, you, you'll be able to find a fair price, you know, by filling out the formula, filling out for solving for PE to make this equal to 25, you'll find what's the appropriate price should be for the stock, giving ROE of 30. So the, the point of all of this is what drives the stock price? It's the earnings and the future earning on the, of the company, either through EPS or through the through return on equity, which is the same thing. They're both return, which is both earnings. We're dealing with earnings. If you like this recording, please like it and share it. And as always, as always, I'm going to remind you, especially if you're a CPA candidate or an accounting student, to check out my 
website. If you're studying for your CPA exam, this is a long-term investment in your career. CPA exam is once once it's behind you, it's done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So you could sit down and focus on your career. So don't short short change yourself. Invest in yourself so you can focus on your career and get ahead in life. Good luck. And most importantly, stay safe.